Chapter Nine of the Palace in the Garden by Mrs. Molesworth. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Owl Fairy, a creature not too bright or good for human nature's daily food. Wordsworth. It seemed a very long time to the next afternoon, and if Libby hadn't been the most unnoticing old woman in the world, she would certainly have seen that there was something unusual in our heads. We could think of nothing but our new friend, the fairy, or the other princess, as Gerald would call her. Who could she be? Where had she come from? How, and this perhaps was the thing we wondered most about, how in the world did she know all about us, or our names, even down to our pet names anyway? Then another thought was in my mind, and Tibbs. Grandpapa had told us to make no friends with the neighbours, would it be disobeying him to go to meet the young lady in the saloon and play with her as she had asked us is she a neighbour said tib we don't know we don't know if she lives there or where she lives or anything we must ask her i said anyway we must go and see her again to ask her we must go to see her once and we will tell her what grandpapa said i think she is a fairy and that she lives in fairyland and grandpapa didn't say we weren't to speak to fairies said gerald oh how i wish mr truro was here we could ask him about it i said and there's another thing said tib we almost promised mr truro we wouldn't say anything about the palace and all that to grandpapa just now not till they came again it's rather a muddle altogether don't you think gussie i dare say she we must get a name for her tib we'd better just call her regina tib said she said it was her name well i dare say regina will tell us what she thinks we should do anyway as you say we must go to see her once to tell her about it i wonder what the bell was that rang and made her rush off in such a hurry that part of it was really very like a fairy story if only she had left a slipper behind her it would have been a little like cinderella i said though the deserted quiet rooms and that part of it is more like the sleeping beauty and the first day when we were trying to get in at the door in the wall was like one of the stories of dwarfs and gnomes in the woods wasn't it said tib we've really had a good many adventures at rosebuds this conversation took place the morning after we had first seen regina we were in the schoolroom waiting for mr markham it was a little past his usual time when he came in i'm a little late i fear he said i had to go to the rectory to settle about giving some holiday lessons to one of the boys there it will be whit week holidays soon you know we didn't care very much whit week would make no difference to us indeed christmas itself we didn't look forward to in those days as most children do it brought no happy family meetings no christmas trees or merry blind man's buff and snapdragon to us but we knew too little about these things in other homes to think about what we missed and grandpapa always gave us a pound each to spend as we chose and at ansdell the christmases we happened to be there the servants had a party and we used to watch them from the gallery that runs round the big hall but whit week we cared nothing about we're not to have holidays then are we i asked oh no mr ansdell has said nothing about it mr markham replied by the by miss gussie you don't know when he will be coming down again do you no i said it won't be next saturday and perhaps not the saturday after ah well i can write to him i thought perhaps he would say something for me to the rector you don't know the family at the rectory i think no said tib it is curious said mr markham he was rather talkative this morning perhaps it had put him into an extra good humour to have the hope of some more pupils it is curious i saw a young lady there this morning that i could really have thought was an elder sister of miss tibbs she was so very like her we were all ears and attention now so like tib said gerald and i so like me said tib yes repeated mr markham exceedingly like he didn't add as i have done only a great deal prettier perhaps it is because tib is my own sister and i'm always seeing her and know her face so well that i don't think her as pretty as other people do 
or rather i don't think about it when you love people dearly you don't think about whether they're pretty or not even now with reg oh i am too stupid again it is very funny we said in which mr markham agreed he was thinking of course that the likeness was curious we were thinking of far more than that of how strange it would be if our mysterious lady was staying at the rectory if so how did she get into the saloon how did she know our names how did she know that we went there to play yes i should like you to see it for yourselves but you don't know the family there no repeated tib rather sharply we don't grandpapa doesn't wish us to make any friends here oh exactly i beg your pardon said poor mr markham probably grandpapa had said something about it to our tutor himself which for the moment he had forgotten for he got rather red poor young man and began rather hurriedly to get the books ready we mustn't waste any more time he said and as we were sorry to see him looking uncomfortable we didn't remind him as we might have done that it was he and not we who had begun the conversation it was a little later than usual when we got out that afternoon nurse had kept us to try on some new frocks she was making for us and we were very cross about it i remember but after all it didn't matter when we found ourselves at last in the saloon and looked round eagerly there was no one to greet us but the smiling face of the portrait the same which we had before thought so lovely but which now seemed uninteresting and disappointing compared to the living changing half mischievous half tender face which already i really believe we had learnt to love she'll be coming soon i dare say said tib let's sit down quietly and think of all we want to ask her in case she makes off in a hurry like yesterday and we were turning towards the end of the room where stood all the old chairs and couches when something on one of the marble consoles caught our eyes it was something lightly covered with a sheet of white tissue paper and lifting it up there were three little nosegays of lovely flowers delicate brilliant hot-house flowers they were and each nosegay lay on a book and a card with writing on it was put so that it could be seen at once on the middle nosegay the words on the card were these for tib gussie and gerald i am so sorry i cannot come to-day the books are to amuse you instead and i will come again the first day i can ah we were very disappointed still it was very nice and funny to receive messages and presents in this mysterious way the flowers were really beautiful and the books were chosen as if she had known us all our lives we knew at once which was for which by the way they were lying on the table gerald's was about animals stories i mean and tibbs was lamb's tales from shakespeare and mine was the wonder book we sat down and looked at our books and scented our flowers don't you think it's very ugly to talk of smelling flowers we always say scenting though somebody laughs at us for it and says it isn't the proper meaning of the word and then we all three made ourselves very comfortable in different corners of the armchairs and couches and read our new stories and thus we spent the afternoon it wasn't as long a one as usual for we had come so late but before we went away we got into a great puzzle about how to thank her for the books and flowers it would be rude to go away and leave no message said tib and she doesn't say she'll come to-morrow only the first day i can perhaps she'll come in the morning and look to see if we've taken the books but not one of us had a pencil or a scrap of paper in our pockets though we turned them inside out gerald had a top and some nails and an awful little pink and white grimy ball that he called his handkerchief and tib had her garden gloves and a rather clean handkerchief and some red wool with a crochet needle stuck in it as she was learning to crochet and i had nothing at all what was to be done i know i said you don't mind using your wool do you tib well look here we'll write with it on the white marble and i set to work and very soon i had written the words thank you kind fairy 
to which gerald made me add come soon and our initials t and two g's it really looked quite pretty and one comfort was there was no fear of any one spoiling it before regina saw it and then we went home for we left our new books in the conservatory because we shouldn't have known what to say if nurse had asked about them the next day to our great vexation something prevented our going at all i forget what it was oh no i remember it was that nurse took us to the little town where mr markham came from to get us spring hats she had got grandpapa's leave to take us when he was at rosebuds and she hadn't told us poor old liddy because she thought it would be such a delightful surprise it would have been a great treat if we hadn't had our heads so full of regina and wanting to see her again but we were not so unkind and selfish as not to look pleased when nurse told us about it how are we to go to the station i asked for nurse had said it was two stations off by train and when she said we should walk to the station it was quite fine and if it hadn't been fine we would have had to wait for another day we were very pleased we can peep in at the rectory garden as we pass i said to tib and perhaps we'll see the lady that's like you whoever she is i wonder if she is regina so do i said tib i wonder about it altogether but though we stared in with all our eyes at the garden of the pretty house next to the church on our way to the station there was nobody to be seen that is the rectory isn't it nurse tib asked her i suppose so my dears she replied rather nervously but i couldn't say for certain having been so little in the village she was always in such a fright for fear of getting to know any one or anything in the village it was rather stupid of her to show it so for it only put all grandpapa's funny ways about it more into our heads but we didn't like to tease her so we said no more but on the way home we took another peep in at the rectory gates nurse was a little way behind loaded with parcels which she wouldn't let us help her to carry and we ran on a little it was easy to peep in without being seen but what we saw added to our puzzle a lady was walking up and down the avenue with a book in her hand which she was reading and as she turned our way we saw her face clearly tib i whispered she's like you and she's like regina too only she's old and tib she's like grandpapa so she was she had the same straight up rather proud way of holding herself as he has dark hair which was beginning to get grey and those pretty blue eyes with the bright eager look which all the blue eyes among us have yes she was like them all the portrait too and just as we were staring there came a call from the house and an old quite old lady came to a glass door which opened on to the terrace i knew afterwards that this old lady was the clergyman's mother or his wife's mother who lived with them and they have all lived there a very long time regina queenie my dear the old lady called out tea is ready francis wants you to come in the lady turned quickly i'm coming mrs leslie she said and then she walked quickly to the house regina another regina we exclaimed and queenie what a pretty name for a pet name i wonder our regina didn't tell us to call her queenie for of course as we had learned a little latin we knew that regina meant queen we must ask her why she didn't said gerald you can fancy how we looked forward to the next afternoon and how we hoped our pretty lady would be there it all went right for once nurse was more busy than usual about all the things she had bought for us at welford and very glad to get rid of us as soon as we had had our dinner for happily she had no trying on to do to-day you may have a good long afternoon in the garden she said i must say you're wonderful good children for amusing yourselves there's never any tease teasing like with some i've known what shall we do nurse or we've nothing to play at and you're getting very good too about never getting into mischief 
you're much better miss gussie than you were last year at ansdell for it was you as was the ringleader yes said i not very much ashamed of the distinction do you remember the day i took grandpapa's new railway rug to make a carpet for our tent and left it out all night and it rained and all the colour ran and do you remember when i pushed gerald into the pond to catch the little fishes and how he stood shivering and crying ah oh, yes indeed said nurse but speaking of ponds the one at ansdell was nothing but those nasty pits or pools in the fields near by you never go near them your grandpapa has a real fear of them and he told me not to let you forget what he'd said no fear we all answered we never go near them we promised him we wouldn't nurse then off we ran even if she isn't there she's sure to have left some message for us like the last time said gerald as we ran i wish she'd bring us some butterscotch gerald exclaimed tib and i what sort of ideas have you fairies and butterscotch mixed in the same breath i only hope tib went on that you won't think we're ungrateful for the books or that we don't care for them because we had to leave them in the conservatory if only she's there we can explain everything said i and she was there not waiting in the saloon this time but running down the long passage to meet us as soon as she heard our steps looking prettier and merrier and sweeter than ever dear regina i have never minded her teasing since that first day when i really didn't understand her i shall never mind it again i am sure she led us into the big drawing-room where she had prepared another little surprise for us she was as pleased about it as we were ourselves it was more of gerald's kind of treat this time not butterscotch but fruit grapes and beautiful little tangiers oranges and little cakes and biscuits of ever so many kinds they were so nice and we ate such a lot of them and regina ate a good many herself you see though i am a fairy i like nice things she said do you have afternoon luncheon every day asked gerald oh how i would like to be you isn't he a greedy boy i said and then i told her about the butterscotch and somehow the butterscotch led to our talking of grandpapa you remember about gerald wishing he'd bring us some and then we all got rather grave for we had a great deal to tell our new princess and to ask her we sat together in a little group on one of the armchairs and regina listened to us very attentively we told her all that grandpapa had said to us before we came to rosebuds and all about the book in the library in london and how we wanted to love grandpapa better as mrs munt had told us we should but that it was rather difficult we told her all we had told mr truro only more for we had to tell her all about him as well and then we asked her if she thought it was disobeying grandpapa for us to come to see her and when we had told her all we could think of we waited very anxiously to hear what she would say her face looked grave though not exactly sad your friend mr truro told you to wait till he came back again she said yes but that was only about coming in here to play we hadn't seen you then and grandpapa told us not to make friends with any of the neighbours are you a neighbour do you live here no said regina i live far from here and how can you come so often to see us then we asked she smiled can't you fancy i come on a sunbeam or a cloud or on a broomstick if you like or if i had only thought of taking the picture away you might really have thought i'd come out of the frame no children i'm not going to tell you where i come from or how i come or anything then you can feel you're not hearing from me anything your grandfather would not wish you to hear and when he and mr truro come here again you can tell them all everything and see what they say you can bring mr truro here to see me if you like and we'll talk it over now as who knows how seldom we may see each other again suppose we make the best use of our time i've got some games to teach you new games let us be as happy and merry as we can be while we are together 
and you cannot fancy what fun we had she kept us playing and guessing tricks and riddles and even singing little glees she had such a pretty voice so busily that we hadn't time to ask her any more questions and indeed forgot to do so so that when it grew late and we had to go home and regina kissed us and said good-bye we knew as little about her or where she had come from or was going to as if she had really flown down to us from some fairy country invisible to mortal eyes and will you come again soon we asked whenever i can but that is all i can promise she said and then she disappeared behind the heavy doors and we heard the key turn in the lock on the other side and we went home wishing it were to-morrow no not to-morrow she's sure not to come so soon again but all the same we must come and see End of chapter nine